Welcome to Year Around the Peninsula. I'm Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp. Moving is sometimes stressful, but it can also be exciting and wonderful. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer takes us to an important housewarming. United States Naval Forces Korea arriving. Commander U.S. Naval Forces Korea has found a new home. CNFK has moved and today is the ribbon cutting for the brand new headquarters building located on the Republic of Korea headquarters naval base in Busan. Rear Admiral William D. Byrne speaks about his new home and what it means for the Alliance. What stands behind me is more than a building. It is more than cement and glass. It is a symbol, a reaffirmation of the lasting partnership between the United States and the Republic of Korea navies. We've been side by side for more than 65 years an alliance that was born in conflict, but strengthened in peace. Our partnership is battle-tested, proven, and enduring. Once all the speakers say a few words, such as U.S. Ambassador to Korea Mark Lippert, the crowd moves down to the front of the new building as guests of honor cut the ceremonial ribbon, solidifying the move and new home of CNFK. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Busan, Korea. After the ceremony, Rear Admiral Bill Byrne gave a tour of the new building and the rest of the base he now calls home. As missions change and develop, so do the bases accomplishing the mission. Senior Airman Emma Mayen shows us how this is happening at Camp Humphreys. To help facilitate the ongoing transformation of Camp Humphreys to U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys, a railhead was created, a project which Garrison Command says fills a much-needed requirement. We introduced uh, great capability to the Alliance. Uh, we opened the railhead here at Camp Humphreys. And all of these uh, motor pools and all of these maintenance facilities would be for naught if we didn't have the capability here representing the railhead. So this railhead is uh, something that's very exciting, uh, something that uh, we could not be without here at Camp Humphreys uh, to facilitate the growth that uh, we're, we're going to see here in 2016 and 17. The expansion at Humphreys will see an increase in personnel and unit readiness, which will help strengthen the bonds with our Korean counterparts. Nearly 140 Korean guests, to include media, uh, come out here to be with us today. And it, uh, it really shows that um, this is such a keystone for not just Camp Humphreys, but a keystone for the Alliance. And this partnership, which is essential for maintaining peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. Senior Airman Emma Mayen, U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys, Korea. The expansion and development of USAG Humphreys will nearly triple the size of the current post. I'm sure you've heard the saying, take a walk in someone else's shoes, or maybe if the shoe fits, wear it. Well, Army Sergeant Alexandria Corniero shows us a different step of the phrase, if the walls could talk. Have you ever looked down and thought, you know so much about me, but I know so little about you. Well, here's a little story called an ode to a boot. They call me combat boots. Well, I've traveled around the world with you from Baghdad to Vietnam. I've stepped in plenty of messes with you through brush and sleet and sand. And I'll walk side by side with you, even if it's our last stand. I'm rough and tough and mean and gruff. I'm the combat boot in this here land. Combat boots are designed to provide a combination of ankle stability, foot protection, and grip. From the 1820s till prior to the Civil War, troops were issued ankle boots. There was no left or right boot. Instead, over time, the boots would shape to the wearer's feet. The first boots to officially be called combat service boots were issued during World War II. In 1957, the Army switched to the shined black boots seen during Vietnam. And the Marine Corps was the first to transition to the style of combat boot we see today. I've hit the ground running with you. I've even flown to whole new heights. I've sailed across the sea with you. Heck, we've even low crawled with no lights. And together we've had victories time and time again. And I hope the next time you bend down, you'll say hello to me, my friend. So the next time you put on your boots, remember these boots were made for more than just walking. 
I'm Army Sergeant Alexandria Cornero, Kunsan Air Base, Korea. The first officially entitled combat boots were actually an adaptation of the then used service shoes. The boots instead had a leather high top cuff added to the top. According to the American Heart Association, heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. Army Sergeant Jackie McKnight catches a spin class that uses hip hop to get the heart pumping. Themes to working out can make exercising entertaining. During Heart Awareness Month, there are several different fitness classes, but one class combines spinning, abs, and hip hop. Staff Sergeant Jerome Lewis, also known as Zay the Trainer, leads the jam pack class. Well, I started off as a personal trainer, then I got into group fit. Uh, so I started teaching uh, classes around Virginia, and uh, I came here to uh, Korea and started doing the same thing. The spin class features music with higher paced beats to keep the participants moving at faster paces. If you're working with friends and you're having fun, it's a lot better than just working out by yourself. You take your mind off of it, you're having fun, and you're working out and burning calories at the same time. So. By facilitating this class, it, it actually gives them the ability to improve their fitness levels as well as uh, their families, which in, in improves the morale of the team. Even though the cycling is the main focus, many participants say the ab exercises are the hardest part. Army Sergeant Jackie McKnight, Camp Carroll, Korea. Staff Sergeant Jerome Lewis changes up the class from month to month and even features a crowd favorite disco class. All the different tasks and jobs throughout the day can really leave someone stressed out. Army Sergeant Mark Breha brings us to a place where nature can help replace that stress. The sounds at Camp Carroll typically include the ones you'd hear at any military base. But there's one area at Camp Carroll where those sounds are replaced with that of nature. Tom Kuniki, otherwise known as the Wetland Warrior, brought this area, the wetlands, to Camp Carroll. We started a collaboration because initially there was nothing here except a parking lot with interlocking steel plates covering this entire area. The wetland system here had been compromised over the decades due to various needs for Camp Carroll usage. Tom has been working on the wetlands since 2008 and has logged in about 6,000 hours with just the wetlands alone. Throughout the years, the area still remains a one of a kind. There are no wetland restoration projects of this nature uh, in the Korean Peninsula. Not only are the wetlands here for all the animals and nature, but also for the soldiers and family members. Army Sergeant Mark Breha, Camp Carroll, Korea. Tom plants new trees every year, marking them with different colored flags to help keep track of when they were planted. Recently, 220th Field Artillery and 313th Field Artillery conducted a transfer of authority. Army Sergeant Anthony Alcantar brings us there. Nine months ago, 2nd Battalion 20th Field Artillery was the first rotational artillery unit to arrive on the Korean Peninsula, and many did not know what to expect. What really surprised me, having never been stationed here, is how welcoming and warm our local community partners were, how professional and disciplined the ROC Army was. It truly is a very unique Army experience uh, to be forward deployed here. On the Korean Peninsula, soldiers train and operate even in the harshest winter weather. And so the ceremony today represents the hard work and dedication of our soldiers and non-commissioned officers. They're in faltering support of their families and transferring the heavy burden of that responsibility to the Red Dragon Battalion as the 75th Field Artillery Brigade continues to support the mission forward. Successfully imparting the lessons learned from nine months, they ensure Korea will be in safe hands. They transitioned that um, mission to us, the 3rd Battalion, 13th uh, Field Artillery, and uh, really prepared the Red Dragons to be ready to fight tonight. I know that my battalion right now can support and defend this historic alliance. As the Deep Strike Battalion passes on the torch, it is now the Red Dragons' turn to learn, grow, and lead the way. Army Sergeant Anthony L. Kansar, Camp Casey, Korea. Now, 66 years after the Korean War, the Red Dragons have returned to protect the citizens of Korea. That was your Around the Peninsula for this week. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening.